Hi again guys and welcome to of course another breakdown of one of the cars from the 1.32 selection of vehicles and this one is commonly lumped in with muscle cars, even I myself will often refer to Mustangs as muscle cars and of course as soon as you do that you get an influx of people who say no it's not a muscle car it's a pony car, well yeah sure. The point is though with stuff like the Mustang and the Camaro and even classic luxury cars like the Chevy Bel Air or the Lincoln Continental or the Cadillac Eldorado, technically speaking, no, they are not muscle cars. However, in the vast majority of racing games that feature them, be it Gran Turismo, Forza, whatever the case may be, they are more often than not eligible for muscle car events. So in that respect, that is why I personally still refer to them as muscle cars. Is it technically true? No. But do all of the classes in this game make sense? No. So who really cares? Now as far as this one goes, having Shelby Mustangs in Gran Turismo is kind of a tradition at, the, at this point. Even as far back as what Gran Turismo 2 at least, we had Shelby Mustangs in there. One of my favourites, the Daytona Cobra was even in there. This one is a fairly obvious choice to bring back. Of course, Shelby was brought back originally to this game with the Cobra, with a huge price increase. Then they brought back my favourite Shelby, possibly even my favourite classic car, the Daytona Cobra, and now they've brought back this one. So the Shelby brand in Gran Turismo has very quietly been getting better and better. We've got a Group X classic racer, we've got a full-on sports car, and now we've got a muscle car, again in a general sense. So that's a pretty good showing. Now if they add the Series 1 at some point we'll have a nice modern sports car as well, but my hopes aren't too high for that one. Now as far as what this car can do, of course going into something like a classic Camaro or a Mustang, you're going to have certain expectations. Expectations that would come with any traditional muscle car like a Charger. And that is tail happy, reasonably heavy, Probably a big torquey engine, but not the most power efficient, and generally speaking, pretty affordable. They sometimes go to six figure prices, but generally you're looking at probably like 70 grand or 90 grand or something like that. Even this Mustang, if I recall, I think was 100,000 credits in GT6. It certainly isn't now. <laughs> It's four times the price. And again, this is a common theme of this pack, and it's because of the current climate of classic cars. That's a lot of seats. <laughs> they are more expensive. It's much more of an investment to buy a classic, or at least to have bought one a few years ago, and to try and sell it now. Because this is 400,000 credits, which is a massive price. Now, part of that might be because of Carol Shelby dying a couple of years ago, thus making the brand that much more iconic, in a similar way to how Panos has, now that Don Panos has died, unfortunately. But maybe, maybe not. As far as what this car can do, and what it actually offers and brings to the table, that's the interesting thing, because that's the way in which it will probably surprise you. Because a lot of those stereotypes that I mentioned, such as muscle cars being big and heavy and cumbersome through corners and having these huge capacity, very torquey, but not necessarily overly powerful, by today's standards at least, engines. This one pretty much goes in the exact opposite to all of those. The engine is not overly large, it's a 4.3 litre, and as far as power, it's not ridiculously powerful either. 304 horsepower is nothing to write home about. It is talky, so it's got that one in the bag, 328 pound feet. Not too surprising for a muscle car-esque vehicle, especially of this time, to have more torque than power. But again, another way in which it bucks the trend, but in a really good way, is the weight. Muscle cars like Chargers, Chevelles, even something like a Camaro will easily be pushing 1500 to 1800 kilos in some cases. Especially if you're talking stuff like the Superbird, which is massive and heavy. This is not. Even visually speaking, it's relatively narrow by muscle car or even pony car standards. If you look at a modern Mustang, it's massive in comparison to this. Whereas if you compare a modern Dodge Charger to the classic Charger, they look fairly equal. The classic is big and the new one is big, but they're big in different ways. Whereas the modern Mustang is bigger in every way than this one. This is relatively modest in fact compared to now. And that is not a bad thing because in muscle car events, being nimble really comes in handy. And that applies if you're either tuned or stock. 
Now going back to what I said about the weight, it weighs in at just 1270 kilos. That is brilliant. That's an outstandingly good weight for a muscle car and consequently the horsepower per ton is actually pretty decent, especially for its age, 239 horsepower per ton. That can rival some hot hatches and even some sports cars, so not bad at all. Now the price is hefty to say the least. 400,000 will not be to everyone's liking, but again, it's a collector's piece. It has a ton of classic value, and I would say that this, or if this were a classic Mustang of the same time period, it probably would not be as expensive. It might be 100,000 still, maybe even less. But the fact that it is a Shelby, of course, does make a difference. When you combine something as iconic as Shelby with something as iconic as a Mustang, of course, it's going to be one of the best collector's pieces out there, and certainly within its field. Now, as far as performance goes, the handling borderlines on the cliché. It is boat-ish by today's standards, but again, that's by today's standards. You compare that to other muscle cars of the time, and it actually handles really well. Now, the thing about the Mustang is you can always get the tail out, and that goes for pretty much any, old or new. But it's not in a bad way. You can actually use that to your advantage, especially up against other muscle cars, because with most muscle cars, the way that they corner is not so much slippery as just straight-up boat-esque, in a bad way. Because they've got so much weight in these massive bodies with skinny little tires, that once the star, or once the star, once the car starts to pitch all over the place, it kind of continues to do so. It wallows, and it's hard to bring that weight back into line, and you waste a lot of time just shredding the tires and drifting. With something as lightweight and as relatively compact as a Mustang, though, yes, it steps the tail out, but it does it in that kind of classic race car way, where they used to just take corners like that. That was just how it was done. So, again, if you put it up against cars at the time, it actually handles pretty well in comparison to a lot of them. Stuff like an E-Type from Jaguar, for instance, even then, you'd be surprised how close the Mustang is, despite not really having any merit to feel as good as something like that. Now, as far as buying one and the kind of use that you can get out of it, being a muscle car, again, or close enough to a muscle car, there are certain things that you need to do to make it more competitive especially against modern machines, stiffen up the springs, lower the suspension, drop the weight even more, and of course sort out the gearbox, which is the biggest problem with all muscle cars. If you do all that, you don't necessarily even need to touch the power. You can keep it in N300, and it's pretty good. Now, I will say that the competitive range of something like this Shelby Mustang is not quite as broad as some other classics. Some classics are just straight up OP. Stuff like the Mazda RX-500, which of course is a concept as well, but still, a classic car which can still definitely compete today. Would this one be a little more cautious? With that being said though, you might actually be surprised how good it can be against even the new Mustang. Now of course you put it up against a 700 horsepower Mustang and you're going to have problems, but you put it up against a Mustang in the same class, and it might be closer than you think. In fact, under some circumstances you might even prefer it. But overall, those are my thoughts on the classic Shelby GT350. It's an obvious choice to bring back, I'm not surprised that they did, and I am a Shelby fan, so of course any new model is very cool. You can definitely get use out of it, and is it expensive? Yes, but it's a collector's piece as well. It just happens to be one that you can win races with also, so what's wrong with that? Overall, I probably will do a tune for this car also in the coming days on the channel, so of course stick around for that, and for now, as always. Thanks for watching.